Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, I have already uploaded four mini project ideas on Business Central, which you can check out on my playlist of mini busy mini projects. Today, I'm excited to discuss with you about a very important mini project, the financial management system. I will talk about the objects to be created, validations to perform, project diagrams to create, enhancements can be made, and finally, I will end up with a key takeaways. Before diving into the details, let's first talk about the purpose of this project. So the domain which it relates to is what finance and accounting. Of course, every organization, every business needs this accounting that is financial management. So it, this is applied to almost all the domains. And the main objective, that is the main objective of this project is to create a financial management system that helps track financial transactions and generate financial statements. The project aims to automate financial management system, reduce manual error, and provide accurate and timely financial information. This will enable business to make informed decisions, improve financial performance, and comply with regularity requirements. So the system will include objects such as table, page, coordinate, queries, and reports that will be used to manage financial data and gener generate financial statement. So let us first talk about the tables which are used in this project. So all these tables are uh, on my own understanding. So if you wanted to add a few more tables, you can add it. So let us understand, let us talk about the very first table, which is a general ledger. You can see here, this is a general ledger table. This table stores all the general ledger entries for the company. So it, it includes the entry number, posting date, account number, description and amount for each transaction. So here you can see uh, entry number will be the code. That is uh, this, we can have it as a primary key. Okay, this is a unique identifier. And other than that, what are all the possible data types I have added here. The next one is the account. This table stores all the accounts for the company. It includes the account number, account name, account type, and account balance. And the third one is the budget table. This table stores the budgeted amounts for each account. It includes the budget ID, account number, budget amount, and budget period. So here you can see uh, that I have added what are the unique identifier here. Okay, and also you can find that you can you have to relate okay one uh, table to the another table there is some common uh, common field should be there so here i have kept account number as in first table account number can be the primary key the same account number uh, sorry the first one entry number can be the primary key and the second one account number can be the primary key and the third is account number can be used to relate to the account number and the budget id is the primary key for the budget table so the next one is we will we have to create the pages right so uh, the pages uh, are the user interface which we have to surely create it okay so the basic uh, thing which we will create is what card page and the list page this will be there for every table okay so general ledger entry card so, uh, and account card budget card so these pages will display the details of a single general ledger entry stored in a general ledger entry table and the card account card page will display the details of a single account stored in the account table the budget card displays the details of a single budget stored in the budget table likewise we can also create the list list page for that so general ledger entry list account list and budget list okay this will lit, uh, list the uh, list what are the uh, entries are there in every table apart from this we can also create few worksheet that is income statement worksheet mm -hmm. And so here you can see we have income statement worksheet is there. So this page displays the company's income statement for a specific period based on the data stored in the general ledger entry and account tables. Next one is the balance worksheet. This page displays the company's balance sheet for a specific period based on the data stored in the general ledger entry and account tables. And the ninth um, the thing is what the navigation page if you wanted to be familiarized with all the pages then you can create a navigation page this page provides links to all the other pages in the financial management system allowing users to easily navigate between the other pages so finally we can create the chart of accounts so this one this chart of accounts 
This page displays a list of all the accounts in the account table grouped by account type. Okay, these pages can be used to provide a more complete financial management system that allows user to perform various financial management tasks such as viewing and editing individual records, generating financial statements and uh, navigating between different pages of the system. So next i wish to discuss about the possible validation for the pages and the table so here you can see these are all the various possible validations so uh, first validation is what the required field validation okay so required field validation this validation ensures that certain fields such as entry number the posting date in general ledger entry table are not left bank before a record can be saved because those um, uh, field are very very important okay so the second one is a range validation this validation ensures that the data entered falls within a specified range such as a valid posting date being within the current fiscal year third one is the unique key validation so unique key validation ensures that certain fields such as the entry number in a general ledger entry table are unique and not duplicate so you can apply for almost all the three tables. Even if you wanted to add some more table, you can add it for that too. Next one is lookup validation. So this validation ensures that the data entered matches an existing record in another table, such as ensuring that the account number entered in the general ledger entry table exists in the account table. Format validation ensures that data entered followed the data enters Fall, uh, entered follows a specific format such as ensuring that the amount entered in the general ledger entry table is in the correct currency format okay the next one is the calculation validation which ensures that calculated fields such as the total amount of the debit and credit entries in a journal match the uh, match and they are balanced and finally you can create a business rule validation which ensures that certain business rules are followed, such as ensuring that the journal entries are approved by the manager before they can be posted. So all these validation, which are, I mentioned is to give you some idea. Okay, you can use this. If you wanted to add a few more validations, please add it. Or if you feel like any of these validations are not required, you can, you can not, uh, you don't want to include that. Okay. The next one we are going to discuss is what the code units. Okay, I have uh, uh, added four, six code units here. So whatever the code unit is okay for you, you can use it. First one is the financial management code unit. This code unit can contain functions that create new general entries, update account balance, generate financial statements like that. So it can also contain other functions related to the financial management task, such as posting general entry, updating account balances and generating financial statements. Next one is the budget management code unit, which can contain the functions that merge the company's budget, such as creating a budget, updating a budget, generating a budget reports like that. Okay. The third one is the cash flow management, which contain um, functions that manage the company's cash flow, such as calculating the cash flow, generating the cash flow reports. The fourth one is the exchange rate management. So this can contain updating um, exchange rates and converting the currency. Okay. And the fifth, this was the tax management. This code unit can contain functions that manage taxes, such as calculating the taxes, generating the tax reports. Okay. And finally, the code unit six financial report management. This code unit can contain functions that manage the company's fiscal reports such as co configuring financial reports and generating custom financial reports so i will give you the detailed information about this code unit in my blog so please go and check that because this has a i can explain more about it but it will take a longer time okay so uh, next one is the queries which we can use it for this particular uh, project is what the first one is account balance query. This query will display the balance of a specific account over a given period of time. So users can uh, actually select an account and specify the start and, uh, start and end date to see the account balance for that particular period. So next one is the journal entry query. Okay, next one is the vendor payment query and budget versus actual query. So why these queries are important? Because uh, uh, queries is used for any database system uh, where we can easily access the data. Okay, easy fetching of the data. So queries are most important. So it is better to create a query for everything. Okay, and finally to talk about the report, that is I am talking about the objects. 
so we can create a report that is income statement report okay so which will display the com uh, company's revenue expenses and net income for a specific period of time users can select the period they want to generate the income statement for and the report will display the corresponding figures okay second one is balance sheet report uh balance sheet report will display the company's asset liabilities and equity as of a specific date fine cash flow statement report which uh, displays the cash company's cash flow and outflows for a specific period of time and finally the vendor payment report this report will display all the vendor payments made within a specific period of time even if you want you can uh, also add the aging report okay so that is also possible here so these are the various reports if you want to add more reports please add it and if you want to know about these jargons like what is a cash flow what is a vendor payment report who is a vendor okay and everything please let me know i can uh, i can explain in a different video next to talk about is what the diagram so what are the project diagrams which we can add it for this particular this particular project so the very first diagram which we can add is what the flow chart Okay, so what is a flowchart? Flowchart is a graphical representation of a process that shows the steps involved and the order in which they occur. Okay, so a flowchart can be used to show how financial transactions are recorded, account balance are updated, and financial statements are generated in a financial management system. So the flowchart can help stakeholders understand the system's workflow and identify areas of improvement. So usually, all these diagrams will be uh, designed. In the very beginning of uh, st like before starting your project okay why because you know every diagram has its own functionality if you are drawing a flowchart draw flowchart is what the overall uh, understanding of your complete process okay through that if you have missed out something so a stakeholder or your manager can easily find out like what you have missed out and what you have wanted to add fine so next one is the data flow diagram so data flow diagram is completely talking about how your data is flowing in your system okay so data flow diagram can be used to show how data moves through the financial management system from the initial recording of a financial transaction to the generation of financial statements so particularly dft diagram can help stakeholders understand the data flow and identify areas for the improvement so everywhere these um, diagrams will be useful and uh, this is useful for the stakeholders and even you can use it for your internal purpose to understand whether it is properly designed whether you what are you are going to do in the project what are you going, you are going to implement in your project will work fine okay and the next one is the entity relationship diagram so an er diagram we will also call it as an erd or er diagram is a graphical representation of the relationship between entities in a system so what is an entity entity is a table so on the top we have designed we have created nearly three tables right so how these three tables are related okay so an erd can be used to show the relationship between the financial management uh, system like a general ledger entry table uh, account table and the budget table how these three diagrams are interrelated and we we can also design a class diagram a class diagram is also a graphical representation of the classes and their relationship in the object oriented programming language so here it's not completely an object oriented programming language okay it's not a 100% but yes of course we can create an object oriented we can also create object based uh, uh, concepts here so this is used to show how the classes are related like uh, classes in the sense how we are just connecting with the journal and accounts so whatever the code unit which we are creating whatever the procedures which we are creating in a different object how we can connect it with each other and how you, we can uh, access these things better way okay so next one is the use case diagram so a use case diagram is a graphical representation of the interaction between the actor and the system who is the actor actor is the user to whom you are going to deliver your project and what is the system so the uh, project which you are going to develop is what the system so this use case diagram can be used to show the different use cases of the financial management such as creating a new journal entries or generating financial statements so you can create this use case diagram in order to see how it is exactly working so i haven't added any example for this if you wanted to see the example i can show it in a different video so these are few possibles or possibilities of the uh, diagram which you can create for any project okay 
and what are the other enhancement you can make is what make is what the multi currency support i haven't added that in the project so you can add some more uh, enhancement like adding a functionality to your support transactions in multiple currencies and generate financial statement in different currencies so initially while you're trying to implement a project you should try only for one currency and if it is working out fine then you can go ahead with multiple currencies for this particular project and then integrating with the banking system you can add a functionality to import a bank statements and reconcile them with the general ledger entries and what are the key takeaways from this particular uh, particular journal uh, particular project okay throughout this project okay you will learn about the importance of financial transaction the need for accuracy and completeness of financial data the significance of reporting and analysis and the importance of flexibility and scalability in a financial management system so This, that's all about today's project thank you for watching this video on the financial management system project i hope you find it useful and informative if you did please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues who may find it helpful don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting content on business central thank you take care